Why is it that as software developers, we haven't built more projects, learned more skills, or earned more money through something that in theory has unlimited scale? Well, given the number of ideas you probably had for different software projects in the past, why is it that almost all of those just stayed as ideas and never got turned into working software available on the internet? Well, for most of us, the answer is that we're afraid of failure. We've been raised in an education system that awards perfection. Well, what if I said you will never get what you want out of life, whether that's more meaning, more independence, or more money, if you spend the rest of your days afraid to do something that fails? The fact is that the first time you tried to walk, use a mouse, or write a line of code, you absolutely sucked at that. You already know that you need to fail repeatedly to eventually get to something called success. Well, if we all know that in theory, why is it that so many of us are still afraid to launch a software product, create a course, write an ebook, start freelancing, or do anything else? Well, it's not just failure that we're scared of. It's the thought of the humiliation that we'll feel if other people see our failures in public. It's that potential feeling of shame that stops us from ever trying something slightly outside our comfort zone and keeps us working on things that have more of a guaranteed successful outcome, which also happen to be the things that society tells us to do, get an education, get a job and retire at 65. This path feels much safer to us because as long as we don't completely screw up and get fired from our job, there's very little chance of a public shame. Well, since I became a solo developer four years ago, I started to realize that I needed to do things that might end in failure and even embarrassment if I wanted to make this new path ever succeed. For example, one thing I started to do last year was launch my own software products. And although I've got 13 years back-end development experience, my front-end and web design skills were extremely lacking. I knew this was the case, but I also knew that if I was ever going to launch a SaaS product that would be successful, I'd also have to get comfortable with launching ones that wouldn't. And now I've launched five web apps on the internet. But if you're judging it by the monetary success, given how much time I put into these apps, you'd probably call it a failure. Thing is, all of these so-called failures that I've had have been incredible learning opportunities where I've picked up skills like React, Next.js, SST, building landing pages and other marketing stuff. That would never have happened if I wasn't willing to give this thing a try. So if you've got an idea for something that you'd like to launch onto the internet, do so in the knowledge that it might not work out, but that won't be the end of the world. And if you're still worried about what other people might say if your project fails, then think of it like this. You already know that if your project fails, you're gonna learn a heck of a lot along the way, and it's gonna make it so that your next project is more likely to succeed. You can also be very honest about the failure, do a kind of post-mortem, and think about what you would do differently if you were to start the project again from scratch. And one thing I did is I made a video about my experience building SaaS. And even though I only made about $350 in total, the lessons I learned have been helpful for people who are following a similar path. And you might think I'm someone who's naturally able to take risks, sharing my ideas on YouTube, creating SaaS products, some of which have no customers, or more recently launching a coaching program for developers who want to grow an audience on YouTube. Some of these things might sound risky to you, and although now I'm happy to take these small bets, I used to be an extremely risk-averse person. Basically, I was a perfectionist, and for the longest time I never gave myself the chance to create my own software products, because I basically thought they wouldn't be perfect. The reason I'm telling you this is because this mindset of being comfortable with failure and being comfortable with screwing up in front of others or fail in public, it's a mindset that you can cultivate over time. The way I've done that is to slowly build up my risk tolerance. I started out writing a few articles online, then creating a few YouTube tutorials, then building an audience, then creating a free course for Java developers, and eventually launching my own paid course. Fast forward to today and I'm taking even bigger risks and quite often I'm putting myself in the line of fire to receive criticism. But frankly, I don't care anymore because I know this is the fastest way to grow as a developer.
if this makes sense to you and you'd like to start taking some bolder moves, one thing you might like to do is create a file where you document all your successes. I've got a file here called YouTube Flex where I'm documenting some of the things that I'm proud of with my YouTube channel. But for example, if you're working a development job right now, you could document some of the technical challenges you overcame. Keep this file handy because the only guarantee is that when you start taking more action, some things aren't gonna work out and that's to be expected. Final thought I'll leave you with is this. If you're so concerned what people will think if you launch a project that doesn't succeed, why would you put so much weight onto those people's opinions? Maybe instead put more emphasis on your own opinion. In particular, what your opinion of yourself will be in five years time if you continue down the current route you're on versus your opinion of yourself if you start to take more calculated risks, have a few failures along the way, and maybe even one or two successes. Well, I recommend the option that makes you most proud of yourself and I'm excited to see what you build. I'll see you in the next one.